Going wild as usual. Welcome to the show that's got more mess than a chimpanzee's tea party. It's also got two celebrities today who are about to do battle. In fact, it's Britain's best. Let me introduce Britain. It is really, I'm telling you, Sharon. Britain's <laughs> finest swimmer up to date, Sharon Davis. Yeah! And, and with Sharon has got to be Britain's most famous vet, probably, Nigel Taylor. Yeah! <laughs> oh, we'll start with Sharon. Now, you're used to getting wet and... I know, but I'm always clean with what I do. So, you know, I'm, I don't know about this. I'm chlorinated clean person. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was an educated answer. <laughs> By the end of the day, you'll be totally disheveled. So. <laughs> like a sponge. <laughs> Nigel, famous for the going live and the pets. Have you uh, had any ambitions to be guns like this before? I've been guns quite a lot, actually, Peter. Go on, tell <laughs> me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've seen a couple on them. I've yeah. seen quite a few on TV, but I spent years on the farms being gunged. So <laughs> this is going to come as nothing new to you? Nothing, slightly more perfume than normal. Well, yeah. no, well I, let me just say to you, wait till you see your round one starter, because this is rather unusual. Go and join your teams. As they go off to join their teams, I must explain that we have not done this round one starter before. There could be mayhem, chaos, anything could happen. All it needs is... <laughs> on your mark, get it. <laughs> This is called Clockwine. It's a reminder that the clocks are about to go forward. We've asked our four contestants to actually get in the guns. Nigel's gone down. They've got to wind the rope in. And every knot that goes round gets five minutes on the clock face. The first one to go to the hour to the, the top of the clock will be the victorious person. And they'll get themselves ten points. The blue team seem to be doing very well. The wind is going round. Everybody's happy here. It's moving as fast as we possibly can. Sharon's down for the blue team, Nigel's there. There's only five minutes in here at the moment. It's a, they're going in. The blue team seems to be doing very well indeed. Ten minutes left on the clock. They're going now, they're going for their last knot. It looks as if, I think the blue team have done it. Yes! Blue, let me get in there and tell you now. Where? <laughs> Pardon, Sharon? <laughs> Lovely soaking. Yes, so you are. But you got yourselves. Ten points, more importantly, control the game. Let's play double dare. <laughs> I've heard of time on your hands, but not on the floor. <laughs> you certainly spent some of that on the floor. We've seen the blue team in action. So, Nick, go on, tell us. From Welton in Lincolnshire, here's Sam Lawrence. Sam is ten and a half years old, and his hobbies are football, tennis, and golf. He enjoys going live, double dare, appearing on going live, being a contestant on double dare, aeroplanes, and eating out. His ambition is to be a professional tennis player, and he's already learned how to wear a sweatband properly and have a tantrum. When Nigel Taylor isn't appearing on Going Live, he works as a vet. I bet that's come as a surprise to a few people. He lives in Plymouth in Devon, and his hobbies are sailing, mountain biking, and model railways. He likes any film with Kim Battinger in it, and anything to do with trains. In fact, one of his prized possessions is his collection of British Rail sandwiches, dating back to 1975. First of all, Sam, why a pro tennis player? Well, because you make loads of money, really. <laughs> well, that's a simple answer. Uh, I, do, do you have lessons now? Or? Yeah, once every two weeks with an hour with the best coach, Dave. Ah, oh, and how good are you? Well, I've played for my county, so I can't be too bad, but... <laughs> Did you win? On. No. Ah, oh, well, I know, early days, and that's... I've got to be honest, playing for your county, that's really... I'd be very proud about that. <laughs> with Nigel. Train spotting. When did it all start? Well, I was born into it, Peter, really. My dad was on the railway, worked as a guard, and then uh, I grew up with trains, I suppose, and then I worked on the railway a bit myself when I was going through university. So how did that progress to get into the old veterinary surgeon? And well, that was a different interest, really. I, we've always had animals, and so I obviously wanted to be a vet right from when I was a kid. That's the blue team. And now, what can I say? Let's introduce the red team. Nick. Matthew Ball comes from Welton near Lincoln, and he's nine years old. He enjoys double dare, going live and sweets, but he doesn't like injections or ITV. Have we paid him to say this? His hobbies <laughs> include football and computers. Sharon Davis, Britain's most successful female swimmer, was born in Plymouth. She started swimming at the age of six, and it was at the age of 11 in Holland that she first swam for England. That's a long way to swim. She likes animals, sport, travel, reading thrillers and cooking, but doesn't like red meat, lazy people, mess in general, and petrol bills in particular. Matthew, what computer games have you got? Well, I've got Super Mario Bros. 1, and I've got this game called Rescue, and one called Simpsons. What does, it, what does Rescue do? 
Well, you've got to dodge searchlights and um, get to this place. Yes, well, I've dodged a lot of things, so I might be good at that, really. <laughs> Let's now introduce you. I've got, you've, got, you've got a new career now, haven't you? You've gone into uh, design and all that, haven't oh, you? Oh, all sorts of things, yeah, but I'm very busy training hard at the moment. What is the likelihood of a medal? Um, it's reasonably well. I've just had three British records in the last six weeks, so I'm swimming quite well, and anything happens on the day, doesn't it? Make the final and just get in there and fight hard. What are you actually rated now in the world? Fourth at the moment. I'm really good in Manchester, me. I'm rated 85th. <laughs> there they are. Great teams. Just a reminder, the viewers, our celebrities are playing for the charity of their choice. So good luck to you. The one with the most points goes on that obstacle course. Controls with you, Nigel, and with uh, Sam. What might be brown, grizzly, or polar? Bear. Too easy. Easy peasy, <laughs> lemon squeezy. What is the middle colour of the rainbow? Now have a little con flap. See, Sam's got an idea. What is the middle colour of the rainbow? Green. You've, did you know that all to yourself? Yep. They're getting a bit confident now, the old blue team. Whoa. All right. True or false? Judo, judo means gentle way in Japanese. True or false? Judo means gentle way in Japanese. If you don't know, dare it across. Dare it across. Dare it across. All right. Now it's with uh, Sharon and Matthew. True or false? Judo means gentle way in Japanese. We're going to say true. It is true. It does mean gentle way in Japanese, and you get yourself 20 points. <laughs> Todd Carter, who plays Mark in EastEnders, is one of the original cast in which children's drama? Grange Hill. It was Grange Hill. They're on a roller, all square, 30 apiece. <laughs> From which plant is linen made? From which plant is linen made? Bit of a trick question, I've got to be honest. Mm. You can dare it across if you don't know. They're not cotton plant, aren't they? Not like cotton plant. Now, if you don't know how dare it at this stage of the game, lots to play for everything to go. We're going across. Going across, interesting decision. Cotton. You're saying cotton. It was yes. a trick question. I told you it was, in fact, the flax plant, and if you lost the 20 points, it goes to the red team. You have control, and now the lead. All right. <laughs> Our sea cucumbers, animal, mm. vegetable, or mineral? Dare if you don't know. Animal. You're going for animal, and you're on a roller. They're cooking on gas. Another 10 points. <laughs> Of which composer's life is the film Amadeus? Mozart. Mozart. Mozart, they're rolling. Which game is played, which game is played in water? Which Sorry? game is played in water? Water polo. It is water polo, <laughs> they're on a roller. In the Flintstones cartoon, what is the name of Fred Flintstone's best friend? Barney. Barney Rubble. Barney Rubble, they're moving in now. The game and a half. The red team making progress. Matthew and Sharon, what comes first in the dictionary? Swift. Switch or stuck? Which comes mm. first in the dictionary? Swift, switch or stuck? Stuck. You're going for stuck. You're right. They're doing it. They're playing this game. How many vowels? How many vowels has a trumpet? How many vowels has a trumpet? Derek. Derek de Cross. Three. It is three. Yes. Well played. Yeah, it is three. What is a Portuguese man of war? What is a Portuguese man of war? It's a jellyfish. It is a jellyfish all to go for. How many strings has a double bass? You don't know, dare it. Dare it. Dare it across. How many strings has a double bass? Double dare it back. You're double daring it back. Answer the question to take the challenge. Physical challenge. You're going for the challenge. All right. There are four strings on a double bass. Let's take their physical challenge. Yes. <laughs> This one is, uh, it's actually, it's called our musical challenge, all right? Sam, just stand there for me. Nigel, how good are you at music? I'm a real natural, yeah. Oh, good to death. <laughs> right. Now, it's going to test their throwing and catching. So, Sam, what do you want to do? I'm going to catch. All right, then, pick up the symbols. I'll show you why. Now, let me just show you inside these symbols here. There is a little spike. Can you see that there? Now, when Nigel throws the balloons to you, you've got to crash the symbols to burst the balloon, all right? Okay. Uh, you've got to catch 12 balloons in 30 seconds. Oh, you should do this easy peasy lemon squeezy. So, Sam, go over there. Good luck, Nigel. All right. In the mode position. On your mark, 30 seconds on the clock. Let's play. Double dare. The musical catch, go. One, they've got one, they're on two. They're looking for third, and they've got a third, and they're rolling on a four. A four down the clock, rolling Nigel Jones. And it's a five to play. And they've got a six, and the clock's going on seven, and seven to play. Seven to play, 20 seconds to go. They're looking for an eight, and eight on the game. They're looking for a nine, and nine down his minute. He's looking for a nine to play. He's missing on, he's looking for a nine. He's gone in, and they've got two. 
We've got a 10, let him give a 9. We've got a 10, he's missing out 11. He's got a 10, let him give a 11. 5, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. He's got a decision. They made the world challenge. Yes. In the, it, put that balloon down. Yes. Put that balloon. Put, <laughs> <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> Let's play some double there! No, there's already a steward's inquiry. Uh, basically, Sam, what were you trying to do to me? Completely gunned you. Right, that's it then. I want to tell you now, it is the first yellow card to the blue team. If there is another gunge attempt on me, I shall disqualify you. All right? That put page to them. Ha! Right. <laughs> that noise means it's double double there. We quickly look at the scores. It's all level, a hundred points apiece. So now they're doubled up. It's 20, 40, 80, and we see that the blue team have control. On which birthday would you receive your first telegram from the Queen? Your hundredth birthday. You, you knew that as well, didn't you? Sam's <laughs> going for it. Whose official residence can be found at the Mansion House in London? The Lord Mayor of London. It can. How many Psalms are there? Oh, you can dare it. Dare it, dare it. Dare it. Dare it, they do. How many psalms are there? Mm -hmm. Red team, if you don't know, I'd double dare it back. Four. You have lost yourself 40 oh. points here. It's 150 psalms, <gasps> and it goes to the blue team. Ooh. 180 points now. We'll have to catch uh, your next question. What part of your body is a dermatologist concerned with? Skin. Skin. It is. They're clearly moving along now on 200 points. What nationality is the fictional detective? Hercule Poirot. Belgium. He certainly is. Whereabouts in Britain would you find the Giant's Causeway? Ireland. They're moving it. Which wood from which trees are cricket bats traditionally made? You. You. It is not. It is Willow. <laughs> They've lost control, and it goes to the red team. Tre yes, you've got it now, red team. <laughs> Get ready here now, Sharon and Matthew. In which city would you find the Beatles' Abbey Road? Liverpool. No, it isn't. It's London. You've lost control. <laughs> what sort of nut has been the same name as a country? Brazil. <laughs> Ooh, Nigel's working hard, and they have control. What was the thriller writer who wrote the... That noise means the end of the game. And I've got to say, a very exciting game today. Questions and answers being thrown backwards and forwards and a physical challenge. We see, as we look on the scoreboard, the blue team are clear the leaders with, and winners with 260 points. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind, Matthew. <laughs> Sharon, have you enjoyed yourself? It, well, it's been very messy and great fun. Matthew, uh, how about you? Enjoy yourself? Yeah, it's been brilliant. Oh, good. Well, it's nice to have seen you, and uh, you're not going to go home empty-handed. Let me tell you, well, I won't, but Nick will, what you've won. This boomerang may be shaped like a triangle, but it still flies in a circle. Just what your bikes always wanted, a set of high-performance, storm-proof cycle lamps. If you like really awful music, nobody need ever know with this personal stereo cassette player. And, of course, your own Double Dare T-shirt and trainers. Nigel and Sam have done very well so far, and they've come to the start of the obstacle course, which today involves us taking them through the Double Dare Garden. This is obstacle number one. One of you has to come over to the bridge, OK? You come through the gate, go over the bridge there, Nigel. Sam, you follow. Be careful of the troll. You have to go fishing in the stream. Now, you've got to catch a flag <laughs> to catch a prize. You need never count on your fingers again if you win this angle display solar eight-digit three-key independent memory calculator. Obstacle number two, you two, is the treehouse. It might not be the house at Pooh Corner, but it's our own special double dare treehouse. You've got to come inside the tree, collect the flag. If you get that, you won't be barking mad, because you win this. If you like cats, think how many you'll be able to make with this designer kit. Cat. Kit. Obstacle number three is the dove cop. There aren't many doves in here at the moment. No, they've all departed. But there is a flag, a flag that Nigel and Sam have got to get and then they've got to get safely down to the ground to win this prize. Your ears will love these records and cassettes. They're just crammed full of music. Obstacle number four is the vegetable patch. We've had a bumper crop in our vegetable garden, so we're about to harvest it. They've got to grapple with the cabbages, scramble with the runner beans, open the cauliflowers to find the flag. They do that, they'll have a bumper harvest with this. Take three friends to see a top film at the cinema. Hopefully one of them will buy the hot dogs. 
Obstacle number five, the water bus. We've been recycling rainwater here in the Double Dare Garden, but unfortunately, we haven't had much rain. It must be the only place that hasn't. We want you to delve in there and search for the flag. They do that, they receive this prize. You'll be much safer when you wear this cycle helmet, especially if you're on a bike. Obstacle number six, you two, is the log slide. You've got to climb up to the top of the log slide. Now, every garden should have a log slide. Yes, it wouldn't be complete without it, would it? That's why they're all unfinished in this country. You'll come down the middle of the log slide into the pond with a flag, we hope, and this will go home with you. This pocket camera is just a job if you want to take photographs of pockets. Obstacle number seven is the garden pond here at Double Dare, and it's stagnated because, well, it's Double Dare, it's murky and it's dank, and Sam and Nigel have got to get a flag to get this prize. If you like board games, you'll love these because that's what they are. Obstacle number eight is our fountain. Now, going back to traditional gardening, like Capability Brown and Alan Titchmarsh, this is our fountain. There's lots of gunge and there's lots of ducks. Ducks that have a flag that they need to get for today's Star Prize. This fantastic video game system comes complete with 3D glasses, light phaser and control stick. And it even comes in its own special cardboard box. Back to the start of the Double Dare obstacle course. Now, we're going to give them 90 seconds to get round this course. You know what you're doing, Sam, don't you? Yeah. All right, and Nigel, have you decided on the charity of your choice? Yes, Peter, I'm going for riding for the disabled. Terrific. Well done. Right, now, I'll put you on the start mark. Good luck. I'm going to move out the way at this point. 90 seconds on the clock. Great prizes to be won. On your marks. Get set. Go! And they're away. First as they go to number one bridge. They come to the garden bridge in the top, and Sam's away. They've got it. They're moving fast. This is a good time to start the obstacle. They've gone on to two. They're very quickly on two. They've got two flags and running. They are really motoring. Sam is going in a rain or not. Nigel finding it difficult to keep up. Then, and Sam's down. Nigel falling. Try and keep together as quickly as you can. Nigel's down there and he just holds up. He's got to try and find Sam. Sam's already gone into the cabbage. Cabbage on four. Now take your time, Sam. Don't panic now. The clock's on your side. You've got plenty of time. 60 seconds. Sam, hold on for Nigel. You need Nigel. He's now gathering. Nigel's got a breath. He's waiting, and we're waiting for Nigel. We've got to hold on a bit. And he's down. Nigel's down the flag. We're going to the water box. Nigel can't get through on the cabbages. 45 seconds. You'll have to start digging. Sam, you've got to start digging it. Throw that stuff out. Throw that. Nigel's with him now. They're looking for the stuff. They've got the flag. They've got the flag. They're on to the flag. They're going now to the lock. They stick together down the lock. We've got 30 seconds and Sam's in there. And where's Nigel? We've lost Nigel. Nigel's down and it's a great one. They're rolling and rocking and rolling. They're on the pond and Sam's down. He's into the pond. It's a pond blown bomb there. They've got it. We've got it. We've got a block. 15 seconds. He's got it. He's got it. It's here. Yes. Let's See what they've won! The calculator, the design kit, the records and cassettes, the cinema tickets, the tackle helmet, the camera, the board games, and the video game system. Yeah! <laughs> Absolutely brilliant! <laughs> Give me five! Lay it back! Stay up high! Yo! All those prizes, absolutely to it. Nice, you were, you were terrific. I enjoyed it. Did you? I did, I loved it. Sam, what about you? Thank <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring in the other cards. Come on in, Matthew. Come on, Sharon. Come on, get in, come on, Sam, get on the bricks. Let's give Matthew up. Come on, up you come. Here. Matthew, let's get you in this. There you are. Now, from all of us to all of you, I think you don't put me in, Matthew. Matthew, don't put me in. I hope you've had a great day with us. Have we've all enjoyed ourselves, haven't we? Right. We'll be back soon with more double dare, more guests, more kids. It's brilliant. See ya! Bye bye! Yeah.